Why do you think Perry Mason wins on most CBS legal dramas regardless of whether they are new or old? Surprisingly, the reason does not lie in the logical and realistic plot, but in its outstanding cast. With the participation of Raymond Burr as Perry Mason or Barbara Hale as Della Street, Perry Mason immediately received the love of the audience. What is worth appreciating is that nearly six decades have passed, and Perry Mason's fans still miss their idol very much. However, some important people have died tragically, and a few are struggling with life. Watch the video to see what your favorite character is like now. Raymond Burr Raymond William Stacy. Burr had a life and career that left a lasting impact on the world of entertainment and beyond. His journey from a small town in Canada to the heart of Hollywood was marked by significant challenges and remarkable achievements. Raymond's childhood was marked by the separation of his parents when he was just six years old. He subsequently grew up in Vallejo, California, where he spent much of his time near his grandfather's modest hotel. This early experience instilled in him a sense of resilience and determination that would serve him well in his future career. In 1946, Raymond decided to pursue his passion for acting and set his sights on Hollywood. He made his film debut in the movie San Quentin, where his imposing appearance and strong presence led to his initial typecasting in villainous roles. One of his most memorable performances during this period was in Alfred Hitchcock's classic thriller, Rear Window, where he played the enigmatic neighbor, Lars Thorwald. Throughout the late 1940s and early 1950s, Raymond appeared in a range of films, showcasing his versatility as an actor. Some of these notable films included A Place in the Sun, A Cry in the Night, Ruthless, The Adventures of Don Juan, Key to the City, Meet Danny Wilson, Tarzan and the She-Devil, You're Never Too Young, and Tomorrow Never Comes. Despite his talent, Raymond was still in search of a breakthrough role that would catapult him to stardom. That breakthrough came in 1957, when he was cast as the titular character in the television series Perry Mason. This legal drama series, based on the novels by Earl Stanley Gardner, became a massive hit and established Raymond Burr as a household name. His portrayal of the brilliant defense attorney, Perry Mason, garnered critical acclaim and a devoted fan following. The show not only showcased his acting prowess, but also contributed significantly to shaping the public's perception of justice and the legal system. Raymond's success didn't stop with Perry Mason. In 1967, he took on another iconic role as Robert T. Ironside, a wheelchair-bound detective in the series Ironside. This role not only showcased his versatility as an actor, but also inspired countless individuals with disabilities. Edward P. Burke, the executive director of the National Council on Disabilities in Washington, D.C., praised Ironside as a tremendous source of inspiration for disabled individuals, highlighting the importance of representation and empowerment in the media. Raymond Burr's impact extended beyond the realm of entertainment. His longtime friend, Melvin Belly, a prominent San Francisco lawyer, believed that Raymond's portrayal of Perry Mason did more for the law than anyone else. The character consistently championed justice and the triumph of right over wrong, leaving a lasting impression on viewers about the power of truth and integrity. Raymond Burr's life and career, which had left an indelible mark on the world of entertainment and beyond, ultimately came to an end due to a battle with a formidable opponent, liver cancer. On September 12, 1993, at the age of 76, Raymond passed away at his Northern California ranch, marking the conclusion of a remarkable journey that spanned nearly seven decades. His death, attributed to liver cancer, brought an outpouring of grief from fans and colleagues alike. Raymond had been a beloved figure in the entertainment industry with a career that had traversed numerous genres and mediums. His portrayal of iconic characters like Perry Mason and Robert T. Ironside had endeared him to millions of viewers, 
making him a household name and a respected actor. Raymond's battle with liver cancer, a disease that often presents significant challenges and pain, revealed the strength and resilience he had displayed throughout his life. Despite facing this formidable adversary, he continued to inspire those around him with his courage and determination. As news of his passing spread, tributes poured in from all corners of the world. Friends, colleagues, and fans mourned the loss of a talented actor whose work had left a lasting impact. Raymond Burr's legacy lived on not only through his extensive film and television career, but also through the enduring lessons of justice, integrity, and perseverance that his iconic characters embodied. Ray Collins Ray Collins embarked on a lifelong journey in the world of theater and entertainment, leaving an indelible mark on the stage and later on the silver screen. His passion for acting was ignited at a young age, inspired by a transformative experience watching his uncle Ulrich Collins perform in a production of Way Down East. As a child, Ray Collins nurtured his budding interest in acting by organizing and participating in impromptu plays with the neighborhood children. This early creative spirit and desire to perform eventually led him to make his professional stage debut at the tender age of 13 a remarkable feat that signaled the beginning of his storied career in the theater. The Liberty Playhouse in Oakland, California, served as the backdrop for young Ray's first professional appearance on stage, setting the stage for what would become a prolific and diverse career. Over the course of his lifetime, Ray Collins would go on to amass an astonishing portfolio of more than 900 stage roles, a testament to his dedication, talent, and versatility as an actor. In December of 1912, Ray took a significant step in his career by partnering with his first wife, Margaret Marriott, to form a vaudeville team. Their collaboration brought their talents to the Alhambra Theater in Seattle, where they entertained audiences with their performances. This partnership not only showcased Ray's comedic timing and acting skills, but also highlighted his ability to connect with audiences through live entertainment. In July of 1914, Ray Collins and Margaret Marriott, along with their young son Junius, embarked on a new chapter in their lives by relocating to Vancouver. This move reflected Ray's commitment to his craft and the pursuit of opportunities in different theaters and regions. After his early experiences on stage, Ray's career took a significant turn when he joined Vancouver's Popular Players, a stock company based at the prestigious Orpheum Theater. This move allowed him to hone his craft and gain valuable experience in the theater world, setting the stage for what would become a remarkable career. A pivotal moment in Ray's career came when he took the bold step of running his own stock company, a venture he pursued for an impressive five years at the Empress Theater. This endeavor showcased his entrepreneurial spirit and leadership skills as he navigated the complexities of managing a theater company and producing successful productions. Ray Collins's work in vaudeville continued to thrive, and his talents eventually led him to the epicenter of entertainment, New York City. His ability to connect with audiences and deliver captivating performances ensured that he spent only a mere five weeks of his career spanning from the ages of 17 to 30, out of work. This remarkable consistency and work ethic demonstrated his commitment to his craft and his dedication to entertaining audiences. However, as the Great Depression swept across the nation, the entertainment industry faced significant challenges. In response to the changing times, Ray adapted by shifting his focus to the medium of radio. He embraced this new platform and embarked on a grueling schedule, completing an astonishing 18 broadcasts per week and working up to 16 hours a day. While this dedication to his career undoubtedly showcased his passion and resilience, it may have taken a toll on his personal relationships. One such impact was the dissolution of his marriage to Margaret in 1924. The demanding nature of his work and the strain of his rigorous schedule may have contributed to the end of this chapter in his life. Nevertheless, 
Ray's commitment to his craft remained undiminished, and he went on to marry Joan Euron in 1926, signaling a new phase in his personal life. Ray Collins's remarkable career in radio and his fortuitous encounter with Orson Welles in 1935 opened doors to a world of opportunity and collaboration that would significantly shape his future in the entertainment industry. Their partnership would not only redefine radio, but also lead to Ray's illustrious career in film. In 1935, Ray was immersed in the world of radio, marking his initial foray into the medium as part of the repertory cast of The American School of the Air. It was during this time that he had a fateful meeting with the young and visionary Orson Welles, setting the stage for a partnership that would become legendary. Ray's association with Orson Welles's Mercury Theater was a turning point in his career. He became an integral part of this innovative theater group, known for pushing the boundaries of storytelling and performance. His collaboration with Wells on The Cavalcade of America for a remarkable six years solidified their creative partnership and showcased Ray's versatility as an actor. In 1937, Ray Collins further demonstrated his range and talent by appearing in Wells's production of Les Miserables, bringing Victor Hugo's classic novel to life on the radio. He also had a notable role in The Shadow, a popular radio show from 1937 to 1938, which allowed him to captivate audiences with his distinctive voice and acting prowess. However, one of Ray Collins's most iconic moments in radio came during the infamous broadcast of War of the Worlds in 1938. In this production, he showcased his exceptional versatility by portraying three different roles, contributing to the immersive and panic-inducing nature of the broadcast. The program, created by Orson Welles, is now legendary for its impact on listeners and its innovative use of radio as a storytelling medium. Orson Welles recognized Ray Collins' talent and entrusted him with a pivotal role in his groundbreaking film, Citizen Kane released in 1941. This film marked Ray's debut in the world of cinema and showcased his remarkable acting abilities on the big screen. Citizen Kane is now considered one of the greatest films in the history of cinema, and Ray's contribution to it added to its lasting legacy. Following his film debut in Citizen Kane, Ray Collins went on to appear in an impressive 75 films, establishing himself as a respected and sought-after actor in Hollywood. His extensive filmography spanned various genres and included roles that highlighted his versatility and depth as an actor. Ray Collins' extensive and diverse career expanded into the realm of television, where he continued to make a significant impact with his talent and presence. These TV roles further solidified his status as a respected actor in the industry. One of Ray's notable television roles was in The Hall of Ivy, where he appeared from 1954 to 1955. This comedic series showcased his versatility as he portrayed the character of Dr. William Todd Hunter Hall, the president of a fictional college. His performance contributed to the show's charm and appeal during its short run. In 1955, Ray Collins took on the role of Judge Harper in the television adaptation of the beloved holiday classic, Miracle on 34th Street. His portrayal of Judge Harper added depth to this heartwarming tale, bringing the character to life for viewers. However, it was his role as Lieutenant Arthur Tragg on the iconic television series Perry Mason that remains one of his most enduring contributions to television. Perry Mason, based on the popular novels by early Stanley Gardner, followed the exploits of defense attorney Perry Mason, played by Raymond Burr. Ray Collins's character, Lieutenant Tragg, was a dedicated and astute police officer, who frequently worked alongside Mason to solve complex cases. His portrayal of Trag added a layer of authenticity and depth to the series, making him a beloved character among fans. Despite his success on television, by the early 1960s, Ray's health began to decline, affecting both his physical well-being and his memory. 
He attributed these changes to his transition from the stage, where he had to memorize lines, to radio, which allowed him to rely on scripts. This marked a poignant and challenging phase in his life and career. Ray's final appearance on Perry Mason was in the episode titled The Case of the Capering Camera, which aired on January 16, 1964. His enduring connection to the show was evident as producers insisted on keeping his name in the title sequence, knowing that he continued to watch the series faithfully every week. This gesture paid tribute to his lasting contribution to the show and to television history. Tragically, Ray Collins's health struggles persisted, and he passed away on July 11, 1965, in Santa Monica, California, at the age of 75. His battle with emphysema marked the end of a remarkable career that had spanned over six decades and left an indelible legacy in the world of entertainment. Ray Collins's dedication to his craft, his memorable television roles, and his enduring love for Perry Mason continued to be celebrated by fans and fellow actors alike. Wesley Lau Wesley Lau's journey in the world of acting, though initially marked by regional success, eventually led him to become a recognizable face on one of television's most iconic series, Perry Mason. Born on June 18, 1921, in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, Wesley Lau began his acting career with considerable success in his local theater scene. However, he harbored ambitions to expand his horizons and gain recognition beyond his regional fame. His patience and dedication would ultimately pay off, leading him to the doorstep of television stardom. In 1961, Wesley made a significant breakthrough when he appeared on the acclaimed legal drama series Perry Mason. Initially cast as a client named Amory Fallon, he showcased his acting prowess in a compelling role that caught the attention of both viewers and the show's producers. This marked the beginning of his association with one of television's most beloved series. Wesley Lau's pivotal moment arrived when he permanently joined the cast of Perry Mason as Lieutenant Andy Anderson, taking over the role previously played by Ray Collins as Lieutenant Arthur Tragg. While the character of Lieutenant Anderson was not part of the original Perry Mason novels by early Stanley Gardner, Wesley embraced the opportunity to make the role his own. Throughout his tenure on Perry Mason, Wesley Lau appeared in an impressive 82 episodes, becoming an integral part of the show's ensemble cast. His portrayal of Lieutenant Anderson added depth and complexity to the series, as he worked alongside Perry Mason, played by Raymond Burr, to solve a multitude of intriguing cases. However, Wesley had his own creative vision for the character. He sought to inject humor into Lieutenant Anderson's persona, providing a unique twist to the role. Nevertheless, the script often called for his character to give suspicious looks, creating a humorous contrast that showcased Wesley's acting range. In addition to his creative input, Wesley Lau had some personal reservations about his character's wardrobe. He, along with his wife, didn't particularly like the hat his character was required to wear. As a result, he would often discreetly slip off the hat whenever possible, showcasing his commitment to authenticity and comfort in his portrayal. Despite his dedicated contributions to Perry Mason, Wesley Lau remained relatively overlooked by the general public. However, behind the scenes, the show's crew and producers recognized his significant contribution to the series. In fact, Producer Gail Patrick Jackson considered him for the lead role in a potential future crime series based on Erle Stanley Gardner's works, highlighting the respect and admiration he had garnered within the industry. Tragically, Wesley Lau's life was cut short when he passed away on August 30, 1984, at the age of 63, due to heart failure. His legacy lives on through his memorable role as Lieutenant Andy Anderson on Perry Mason, and his unique contributions to the character continue to be appreciated by fans of the series. Richard Anderson Richard Anderson's life and career were marked by a remarkable journey from humble beginnings to becoming a prominent figure in both film and television. 
Born on August 8, 1926, in Long Branch, New Jersey, he would go on to leave a lasting impact on the entertainment industry. At the age of 10, Richard's family relocated to Los Angeles, California, setting the stage for his future in the world of entertainment. After graduating from University High School and serving for 17 months in the Army during World War II, he embarked on his path as an actor. His commitment to honing his craft led him to the Actors' Laboratory, where he sought to refine his acting skills. Richard Anderson's journey into the world of Hollywood began in an unconventional way, as he initially found himself working in the mailroom at MGM. However, his talent and determination soon caught the attention of industry insiders. In 1949, while working on the NBC show Lights, Camera, Action, he received a life-changing phone call that would alter the course of his career. This call led to a screen test, resulting in a six-year contract with MGM, a major studio at the time. During this period, he appeared in approximately 30 films, showcasing his versatility as an actor. Some notable examples of Richard's filmography during this era include The Magnificent Yankee in 1950, Scaramouche in 1952, Escape from Fort Bravo in 1953, and the iconic science fiction classic Forbidden Planet in 1956, where he left an indelible mark as the character Captain Quinn. In 1958, Richard Anderson transitioned to 20th Century Fox, where he continued to expand his repertoire, featuring prominently in The Long, Hot Summer. His talent and presence on screen made him a sought-after actor in the industry. However, it was in the realm of television that Richard Anderson achieved enduring recognition and became a household name. He portrayed Oscar Goldman in the Six Million Dollar Man TV series, which also led to TV films and the spin-off series The Bionic Woman. This distinction made him the first actor to play the same character on two TV series running simultaneously on two different networks, cementing his place in television history. Throughout the 1960s, Richard Anderson continued to make significant contributions to television. He played pivotal roles in notable series such as portraying Richard Kimball in the two-episode finale of The Fugitive, Police Chief George Untermeyer on Dan August, and Police Lieutenant Steve Drum in the final season of Perry Mason. Beyond his acting career, Richard Anderson had a passion for vintage cars and was deeply committed to philanthropic causes. He actively supported organizations like the Veterans Park Conservancy and the California Indian Manpower Consortium, reflecting his dedication to making a positive impact on the world. Richard was married twice, first to Carol Lee Ladd and subsequently to Catherine Thalberg. He was the proud father of three daughters, Ashley, Brooke, and Diva. Richard Anderson passed away at the age of 91 due to natural causes at his Beverly Hills home. His legacy lives on in the hearts of fans who continue to appreciate his contributions to the world of entertainment and his dedication to making a difference in the lives of others. William Talman Born in Detroit, Michigan William Talman's early passion for acting was evident as he founded the Drama Club at the Cranbrook School in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. This early interest in the theater laid the foundation for his future career. While pursuing his education, he continued to nurture his acting skills by performing at Dartmouth College and the University of Michigan. After completing his college education, William Talman took the bold step of joining a stock company, marking the beginning of his journey as a stage actor. This decision allowed him to gain valuable experience and further hone his craft. His dedication and talent eventually led him to the bright lights of Hollywood. One of the most iconic roles of William Talman's career was his portrayal of District Attorney Hamilton Berger on the classic television series Perry Mason. Despite the character's reputation for losing all but three of his cases throughout the series, William Talman defended his character's actions in a 1958 interview.
He emphasized that it wasn't a loss when a district attorney failed to convict an innocent man, asserting that he always acted in the interest of justice. This perspective highlighted his commitment to portraying his character with integrity and depth. Beyond his work on Perry Mason, William Talman made a significant impact in advocating for a crucial cause. Despite being a heavy smoker throughout his life, he chose to use his position to film an anti-smoking public service announcement, PSA, for the American Cancer Society. This PSA was groundbreaking, as it marked the first time a Hollywood actor publicly addressed the dangers of smoking. His decision to participate in this campaign, despite battling lung cancer himself, demonstrated his unwavering commitment to leaving a positive legacy. In the PSA, William Tallman began with the powerful words, Before I die, I want to do what I can to leave a world free of cancer for my six children. These heartfelt words captured his deep concern for the health and well-being of future generations. Tragically, William Talman's battle with lung cancer ultimately claimed his life, and he passed away on August 30, 1968, at the age of 53. William Hopper, William Hopper, the only child of the renowned Hollywood columnist Hedda Hopper, carved his own path in the entertainment industry leaving a lasting legacy through his role as Detective Paul Drake on the iconic television series Perry Mason. Born into a world of Hollywood glamour, William Hopper's upbringing was uniquely shaped by his mother's prominent career in the entertainment industry. His early exposure to the world of film and celebrity likely ignited his own interest in pursuing a career in acting. William Hopper's most memorable and enduring role was that of Detective Paul Drake on Perry Mason. He joined the show from its very inception in 1957 and remained an integral part of the cast until his untimely death. As Detective Paul Drake, he became a beloved character known for his sharp wit and unwavering dedication to solving mysteries alongside Perry Mason, played by Raymond Burr. Before achieving fame as a television detective, William Hopper had made notable appearances in films during the late 1930s. In 1937, he appeared in three films, including Footloose Harris, Over the Goal, and Torchy Blaine, The Adventurous Blonde. These early roles provided him with valuable experience and a glimpse into the world of cinema. However, it was his role in the 1954 film Track of the Cat that showcased his acting talent on the big screen. This dramatic Western film allowed him to demonstrate his range as an actor and marked a significant point in his filmography. Tragically, William Hopper's life was cut short when he succumbed to a heart attack on March 6, 1970, at the age of 54. He had been hospitalized for two weeks prior to his passing, battling health issues that ultimately claimed his life. Barbara Hale Barbara Hale, born in DeKalb, Illinois in 1922, embarked on a remarkable journey in the world of entertainment, becoming a beloved and accomplished actress known for her iconic role as Della Street on the classic television series Perry Mason. As the second child of Willa and Luther Hale, Barbara Hale's early years were shaped by her Midwestern roots. Her passion for acting and the arts led her to pursue a career in Hollywood, where she would leave an indelible mark. Barbara's career in the entertainment industry began under contract with RKO, one of Hollywood's major studios. During this period, she showcased her talent in a range of films, including Higher and Higher, Lady Luck, The Window, Jolson Sings Again, Lorna Doon, and The Far Horizons. Her work in these films highlighted her versatility as an actress and laid the foundation for her future success. However, it was her role as Della Street in the television series Perry Mason that would define her career and make her a household name. Barbara Hale portrayed the loyal and resourceful secretary to the titular character, Perry Mason, played by Raymond Burr. Her portrayal of Della Street spanned an impressive nine seasons of the show and continued with 30 TV movies based on the series. 
Her performance garnered critical acclaim, earning her a Primetime Emmy Award in 1959 and a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1960. Barbara's impact extended far beyond her on-screen work. Her embodiment of Della Street became an enduring symbol of integrity, justice, and the fight against corruption. Perry Mason was more than just a TV show. It was a cultural touchstone that celebrated the human ability to stand up against injustice. Tragically, Barbara Hale's passing was revealed in a heartfelt Facebook post by her son, William Catt. She passed away of natural causes at her home in Sherman Oaks, California, at the remarkable age of 94. In her final moments, she was surrounded by the love of her family and friends. Barbara Hale's legacy lives on through her son, daughters Johanna Cat and Juanita King, her six grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren. Her enduring impact on the world of entertainment, her portrayal of Della Street, and the profound themes of justice and integrity explored in Perry Mason ensure that her memory will forever be cherished by fans and those who admired her work. What do you think about the cast of Perry Mason? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.